master cut or subsequent. What if this was your final exam? How, let's see how you would do on this. Okay? We're going to make this. Everybody needs to know this. Here's one. Question one. Which of these would not require a driver to exert unusual force on the brake belt, huh? Come on, Nick. We've already started, buddy. Which of these would not require a driver to exert unusual force to brake? Loose rivets, wet, hot, or damaged brake lattice, brake shoes out of adjustment, or the wheel cylinder piston stuck. Put your best answer down there. But we're going to grade this after we're done, okay? And there's 26 questions, so we're going to go through them twice, all right? We're going to talk about them a second time. All right. Question number two. Brake fluid must not do what? <coughs> brake fluid must not do what? This brake assembly goes where? Does it go left front, right front, left rear, right rear? Gotta figure it out. Talking about the ones that had the left front. Yeah, one of them, the older vehicles had drum brakes all the way around. That's what I'm talking about. If they had drum brakes all the way around, would they, have, they wouldn't have parking brakes all the way around. Not likely. All right, number six. On these duo servo brake shoes, which shoe goes to the front? You know, a lot of the, a lot of the places aren't teaching drum brakes anymore because they think they're going away, but the newer pickups are coming back out with drum brakes on them. So you better be aware of that. Which shoe goes to the front? All right, you get it. This drum brake assembly goes on the A left front, B right rear, C right front, or D left rear. Question, when the brakes aren't being used, there is blank on both sides of the secondary diaphragm. This is the brake booster, by the way. It's a cutaway of the brake booster. You got that? Booster by pressing the brake to start the engine. Nick says if the brake booster is good, the pedal should fall some when the engine is started. Zach is right, Nick is right, both are right, or both are yo yo's. Both are yo yo's. Uh huh. Zach Hudson. Oh. Definitely yo yo. This kind of power brake booster gets its power to boost from where? Do 
You got the right answer sheet? ABS system positive. Give him one of these. Oh. Well, keep your answers that you've already marked. You're going to have to transfer them. <coughs> I noticed you didn't have as many spaces. I was wondering why I didn't want to take <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Question 11. The output piston in a hydraulic system exerts five times the force that the applied piston exerts. Why is the output force greater? The output piston moves five times as far, the area is five times as large, the area is one fifth as large, or the pressure in the remote zone is five times the greater than pressure in the master cylinder. Actually chopped off part of the word cylinder. This is Pascal's law. You've been through that, haven't you? Mm -hmm. On lectude, yeah. Yeah, you went, you went through it. If you did lectude. Pas oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pascal's law, yeah. yeah. I'm watching the lips moving over there. Huh? I'm having lips moving over there. Well, they're making you do math on there, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, if you got math problem, Nick is the one you go see because Nick can do math. He's he was that one who was missing. That's rough, isn't it? All right. <laughs> if the vehicle does not brake when the pedal is fully depressed, it may be caused by what? In other words, you match the pedal all the way down and it doesn't stop. to grab. Whenever I say grab, I mean when you just start to apply the brake, one of the wheels goes and slides, you know. Line is contaminated with grease or all threaded drums from being machined too fast. You know, if you machine the drum, if you got the machine set to machine the drums too fast, you actually make threads on the, <laughs> on the drums, which is not a good thing. A leak in wheel cylinder uh, or a loose packet plate. We're talking about which would not usually call a brake to ground. Now the ASC test people will do that and they'll make sure you know that all of these accept or one of these would not. That's what side is bold for. What's the proper name for port A? Port A. What is the proper name for port A? Now we did talk about this in our opening session. This is the master cylinder, by the way, that you're looking at. Brakes released, brakes applied, you know, two different ways. The booster is, this booster is A, applied, B, released, C, holding. <laughs> Look carefully, you can figure it out. Did you answer it really fast? Yeah. You did? What about you? You've been through that, haven't you? This booster is. A, applied, B, release, C, holding. What if this was your final exam and it was going to pass you or fail you for the whole semester? Would that be fun or what? Ooh, okay. Why is this being done? Are we wanting to prevent brake chatter? True the up for machining, provide a non-directional finish for the new pads to see. What's being measured here? A. Rotor thickness. B. Rotor parallelism. C. Rotor run out. Or D. Rotor radial run out. You'll see pictures like this on your ASE test, by the way. Did you ever get registered for that? Yeah. You did? Uh, yeah, I paid for my test, right? 
Yeah, they got long. So you're, when are you going? When are you taking them? Friday. Friday? In Montgomery? No, Dothan. Dothan? Okay. You know how to get to the one in Dothan? I figured out. All right. I got family up in Dothan. So it's, it's not bad. It's a, I figured out. You'll do all right. You'll ace those. Right. Question 19. Why is this operation being done? A, to check for copper alpha reactions. B, to check for moisture and brake fluids. C, to check for the fluid level switch. Or D, to check the red brake light. Customer says their brake pedal slowly falls to the floor as they're sitting at a stoplight and the car begins to creep. What's the most likely cause of this symptom? Other than that, their brakes feel normal. But when they're sitting at a stoplight, the pedal goes away and then the car starts moving a little bit. Question number 21. This is a mic reading question. This is a 0 to 1 inch micrometer. What is the reading? This is a zero to one inch micrometer. What is this reading? Hold on. Alright, number 21. It ain't got no spot where you could write. Mm -hmm. 21. Did I mess up on that? <coughs> Just write it out beside it. <clears throat> you got it? Everybody ready? This is a little zero to one inch micrometer. What's this reading? What I always tell everybody was that I had never read a mic before. But I noticed other people mic and stuff. And so one day I walked out to the tool truck and I said, How much is that mic right there? And they said, $15. And I bought it. And I went back in there and I stood by my toolbox for about two or three minutes and figured it out. It ain't hard. Question. Yeah. All right. All right. Looking for this reading. Are we looking from the zero to three? Or is it the side one where it's the. This is the one where it's lined up here. Oh, okay, okay. We'll go into that. Yeah, I ain't putting that from the bone in there. You know, this is a zero to one inch micrometer. What's this reading here? It's pretty scary when you see it on a test, isn't it? <laughs> and you know if you're if you're not really familiar with it. Somebody's still figuring over there. You ready? I'm good. Okay. What probably caused this uneven breaking down <coughs> where got caliper slides, got caliper piston, bad wheel solder, or improperly machined motor? Okay. Notice this is the lining right here. And this is the lining.
If you're checking a vehicle and notice that even though it's driven every day, the rear rotors are rusty, but the front ones are not. I don't know. I don't know. What might be the cause of this? A, bad portion of the valve. B, nothing. This is normal. C, bad park brake shoes in the hat. Or D, too many handbrake turns. You seem like somebody that would do a lot of handbrake turns to me. Yeah. Don't try to do it on an SUV, you'll flip it over. <laughs> These are the answers. Somebody trade trade papers with your bud. Are there 27 or 26 questions? Huh? What was that uh go back to that last question real quick? matter of fact, I need you to go back to the first one that you weren't here for, don't you? Yeah. All right, let's go back there. All right. There was one. There's two. like it. I mean, if it was going to be on a, if it was on an old car or a new car, uh, you can look at this if you know what you're looking at and tell if it goes on the front wheel or the back wheel. Like if, you know, the older cars, I'm talking about late 60s, a lot of them would have a, you know, a lot of people were storing cars nowadays and they run into a situation where you got all that. And then, uh, I need, <clears throat> I did number four, I need number six. There are six. Okay, and um, number 10. Number what? Number 10 and 13. Time. All right. Whoop, we're going to go one, swap papers with somebody. Go ahead and swap your papers. Swap papers, swap papers. See, they kind of give you an idea of where you are anyway. Right? Loose rivets. Loose rivets on brake shoes. This test is, this test is not going to go into your permanent record, so don't, you know, don't be stressed. You know what I mean? Brake fluid must not absorb moisture, right? You know that? This one goes on the left rear. How do we know this one goes on the left rear? Why I said that is because, like, you, you know how the, <laughs> all right, the spring at the bottom, yeah, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. and then the other part. This part? Yeah, I just know that it usually be on the right side of me when I'm facing towards it, so. I felt like it would be on the back left. Back left. Good answer. What do you think, guys? Everybody get that right? Yeah. Left it. rear. Because you know the cable is coming this way. The cable that hooks to this is going to be going to the front. right? So it's got to be, you know. These are what? Duo servo brakes. We got that one wrong. Duo servo. Question number five. Which one of these goes on the left front? 
None of them do. Those are both rear brakes. Now these dual servo brake shoes, which shoe goes to the front? The short one always goes to the front. Always remember that if it's dual servo. Now the reason trailing, you know, where they're anchored at the bottom and the top, where they have the wheel cylinder up here and then at the bottom they'll have the uh, that anchor uh, point. That's basically going to have brake shoes that are the same size. But these right here, you know, don't mess up and put, if you get brake shoes on or pay attention, make sure you're putting a short one on the front of it. Kind of, this jump, this, where does this one go? Look, guys, all you have to do is look at that, really. <laughs> but, I mean, although you do have some front-wheel drive cars, but look at this right here. See the adjuster? The adjuster going to go on that back shoe. And also you see a short shoe and a long shoe, right? You got it? You can figure that out if you look at it. This, this cable and adjuster is always going to be on the back side. And so it's got to be right front, okay? All right, when the brakes aren't being used, they're vacuum on both sides of that diaphragm. Both sides has vacuum. All right. Okay, both these guys are right. What you do is you put your foot on the brake without the engine running. You start it, and it pedal on to go down. Now, before you ever do that, you need to pump it to make sure there ain't no stored vacuum. You put your foot on the brake, it's going to hit pretty close to the top, fire it up, it ought to go. If you fire it up and it doesn't drop, you need to see if there's vacuum going to the booster. If there is vacuum going to the booster, but it don't go down, the booster is bad. That's all there is to it. What kind of power brake booster gets its power to boost from? It gets the power steering pump, puts fluid in there. And that's your... That's the one. That's a hydro boost brake system. Why do they use those? If it's either a diesel and doesn't have any vacuum, or there's not room for a big old fat ugly brake booster in the engine compartment, they'll usually use a hydro boost. Alright, this one here. The area of the output piston is five times as large as the area of the input piston. You didn't have to do any math on this one. All you had to do was figure out that if you've got more area here, and whatever you put here is going to be multiplied if you've got more area here. That's what Pascal's law is all about because you can't compress fluid, right? The vehicle doesn't have brake pedal fluid pedal. E or B or C. How many times you guys put brake pads on after you push the piston back? The first time you hit the pedal, it goes all the way to the floor. Next time it comes a little more, then when you get them things moved out. And then you can have low fluid level. If the master cylinder fluid level is low enough, you've done put a bunch of air in there and that's bleeding time. Uh, which of the following would not cause the brakes to grab? A leaking wheel cylinder is not going to make them grab. Okay. There's other stuff. If it gets sticky, they can grab if they have grease or oil on. Threaded drums can make them stick because it moves the shoe over. Uh, loose backing plate makes crazy things happen too. Uh, this is the compensating port. The compensating port. Some of these questions you're going to see on your real final. So pay attention to these and burn them in, okay? I'm trying to kind of prepare you <coughs> so you won't be totally off. This booster is applied. How do we know it's applied? Because the, uh, the atmospheric ports open. The atmospheric ports open. That lets atmosphere come in here and apply pressure here because there's no uh, air here. There's no pressure here at all. Uh, or there's very little pressure because the vacuum line is vacuum source is going to it. That's actually looking at it from the bottom. But the point of the matter is, if you've got vacuum here and atmospheric pressure here, you're going to have applied apply brakes. And that's when your atmospheric port's open, your vacuum port's closed. So you shut off the vacuum so it can't get back there anymore, and you've opened up the atmosphere and you're letting it go in there. This one right here is released because there's vacuum on both sides of it. The atmospheric port's closed, vacuum port's open. And so it's letting the vacuum be on both sides of it. And your atmospheric source comes from around here. There's a little, little filter hole in there. You're going to do this to true the hub for machining. What you're doing when you machine a, a uh, rotor is you're going to true this up to that. And if this has got rust and bumps and crud all over it, you're going to make this untrue. When you put it back on there, you're going to have, you know, terrible breaks. All right. This is rotor lateral run out. You cannot measure parallelism uh, as far as that. You know, like if well, parallelism would mean are both sides of the rotor 
like this, or are they like this? So the only thing you can measure right there would be lateral runout. And that's the dial indicator. All right. This is to check for moisture in the fluid. Do you remember what fast car stands for? Fast car. F A S C A R. Fluid analysis by stimulation of copper alloy reactions. That's when you the dip strips with the little colors and all. We use those. They cost a dollar a piece, by the way. All right. Customer says their brake pedal slowly falls to the floor. That's a bad master cylinder. And you remember feeling that on your that lady's car that had the van that we worked on? Mm -hmm. And uh, still got and then we got to wound up getting a bad master cylinder that locked, helped when we released the brake. And it was supposed to be brand new. Of course, it made in China. This is 266 thousandths. And what we know that is, look, this is 25, 50, 75, 1, 25, 50, 75, 2, 225, 250, plus 16. Got it? That ain't complicated. You know what I mean? If you read a tape measure, you can figure this out. All right. This one right here is 56,000. 25, 50, and six more. Wow. See how easy that is? There ain't nothing to it, man. It's just plum simple. All right. You see this? This is 325,000. How do we know this? Because we're at 25,000, and that's 25,000. So that's 325. <laughs> What you said that last one? You said well, I did six. I went to three six five. Yeah. Fifty six. Fifty six thousand. All right. Look at this one here. This is two twenty. Because I hadn't made it to two twenty five yet, and we stopped just short of that first line. You'll know how to read these things. Well, like you know, you get to the vernier caliper. Oh, that one's great fun. You know, the one that doesn't have the needle or the little black numbers. Of course, you can buy one for $10 at Arbor Freight. It's got little black numbers on it. You know what I mean? Stuck caliper slide typically calls this. Hey, Mr. Yeah. That brake pad is kind of... That's right. Right. One, one caliper pad is stuck. One, I mean, it's stuck on one end. The piston? No, no. The what caliper slide. The little things that slide in and out that your caliper so retention bolt. So you would, say a piston was you know, stuck. Mm -hmm. That that was, mm -hmm. All right. This right here is a bad proportion valve. Because if it's not letting fluid get to the rear brakes ever, they're going to be rusty. All right. Everybody happy?